The history of Tibet is one that is rich with religion and also very bright, colorful traditions of dance and song. While Tibet is located close to China, north of Nepal and India, it has influences from all of those areas. So much is incorporated inside of Tibet, but at the same time, Tibet was so isolated. The way of life there is really unique to that elevation. It's the highest elevation in the world, the plateau, the roof of the world. It was an independent nation when China invaded in 1949. The communists took control of China. They invaded Tibet from the east and for the next 10 years sort of took control of Tibet in a way that it became an absolutely desperate situation for the Tibetan government. Since 1959, the Dalai Lama has lived in India and probably 135,000 Tibetans live with the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan government, which functions in exile. Over the following decade, the people began to rise up and they began to fight back. From that point on, the repression really became extremely severe. The Chinese government launched a direct attack on anybody who was a Tibetan government official or anybody within the monasteries and the nunneries. We're talking about 6,000 plus monasteries destroyed. We're talking about thousands, tens of thousands of Tibetan lives lost. If anybody was found out to be doing anything that broke Chinese law, they were imprisoned, tortured. Some people spent more than 30, 40 years in jail and their crimes were no greater than having a picture of the Dalai Lama or having practiced Tibetan Buddhism within their home. Alden Gatso is a Tibetan monk who spent more than 33 years in prison inside of Tibet for taking part in a demonstration and for putting up a poster. That was his crime. He was beaten and tortured and brutalized in ways that are beyond belief. They uh, strung him up by his arms from the ceiling. His shoulders popping out of their joints and just passing out from the extreme pain. Another thing that they quite regularly use on Tibetan political prisoners are uh, cattle prods, electrified prods that you would use on cattle to make them move along. They would use on people, on the nuns, they would rape them with these cattle prods. They stuck the cattle prod into his mouth, they broke his teeth, the electric shocks themselves were so intense that in fact all of his teeth fell out of his head. He was released from jail finally under pressure from Amnesty International in a letter writing campaign. Paulden didn't just leave, escape Tibet like so many people do right away. He went back to the prison and he actually bribed the guards to give him some of these instruments of torture that were used on him and used on the other prisoners. And he brought them when he escaped from Tibet into India. What that did for the rest of the world was it gave people a visual image, the actual instruments of torture that were used on him. <laughs> One of the most striking things about Paulden's story is how he doesn't harbor any hatred for the people who did these things to him. He doesn't harbor any hatred for the Chinese government. He truly embodies the ideals of Tibetan Buddhism, of love, of compassion, even for one's enemy. Tibet is a very resource-rich country. Tibet has vast copper reserves, a lot of gold reserves, a lot of minerals that China desperately needs for its own economic development. 
the resources are extracted and taken straight out of the region and used to fuel economies which don't really trickle down in any way to the Tibetan economy. For 50 years, the Tibetan people have been suffering an occupation in which they've been brutally dealt with when they have voiced any dissent to that occupation by the Chinese government. 50 years on, there are very little signs of the Chinese uh, loosening their grip. In fact, they're tightening their grip because suddenly technology has advanced which has enabled them to extract the natural resources that they've always known is there. look to what Tibet represents in this time, which is sort of uncertain, I think, for all of us. The ideals of nonviolence and compassion, I really do believe it is a symbol for our world, especially for our generation and for the youth right now, to what is possible.